welcome back in the last four videos we explained in a bit of detail the perceptron algorithm or the perceptron uh, neural network we studied how it works the intuition, the intuition behind it and then we had some sample java code just to make sure we understand how it works and after that we I I sort of uh, studied the development of the uh, perceptron into a multi-layer perceptron where we can handle non-linearly separable data. Remember that the perceptron is used for linearly separable but the, mul the MLP or the multi-layer perceptron is can be used for non-linearly -li separable data. If you have watched th those videos then hopefully now you have a good and of course watched and understood how they work and what they are Then hopefully now you have a good foundation to sort of uh, uh, learn more detailed uh, uh, and more complex uh, uh, architectures of neural networks. The components of uh, an artificial neural network it's comprised of a network of artificial neurons or you can think of them as uh, perceptrons so also now known as the nodes and you notice now now we can have one or more hidden layers we can input nodes hidden nodes and output nodes and they are interconnected as you can see we, we, we with the same idea of outputs from one layer become inputs to another layer with the weighted sum of the inputs and things like that. So outputs from one layer become inputs to the next layer. Those nodes or these nodes are connected to each other and the strength of their connections to one another is assigned a value based on their strength. So the, con the connection strength has a value. If the value of the connection is high enough then it indicates that there is a strong connection, how strong the connection is with each node's design a transfer function is built in so for every node we have a transfer function remember in the normal standard perceptron we have the threshold in, in the MLP we had the sigmoid transfer function so we have three types of neurons in the artificial neural network we have the input nodes they have neurons, the hidden nodes and the output nodes similar to what we've studied in the MLP now the flow of the artificial neural network, how the data flows from input to output, the input nodes take in information in the form which can be numerically expressed. So the input nodes, these ones, they read the input from our data set and preferably uh, things that can be numerically expressed. So we need to have numerical data, numerical features or numerical attributes. The information is presented as activation values where each node is given a number the higher the number the greater the activation so we just pass them on to each node and we do the uh, weighted sum and the output this transformation is then passed through the network based on the connection strengths or the weights now if you remember if you remember here we said each connector will have a strength which is the weight based on these weights or these strengths inhibition or excitation these are from the sort of theory of the, uh, uh, the neural network from the biological side. Based on the transfer function as well, the activation value is passed from node to node. Each of the nodes sums the activation values it receives. It then modifies the value based on its transfer function. Like we studied before, each node receives the weighted sum, it sums them up and then passes the input to the next layer. I'm sorry, passes the output which becomes an input to the next layer. The activation flows through the network through hidden layers until it reaches the output nodes. The output nodes then reflect the input in a meaningful way to the outside world. So transfer, uh, it goes from here, uh, output from here becomes input here, out, output from here becomes input here and so on and so forth until we reach the output nodes where we output something to the world. For example, the prediction of a class of something so that's how data flows through um, an artificial neural network. Now the algorithm, we have several types of neural networks, but they can generally be classified into feed-forward or feedback networks. The feed-forward, as the name suggests, in a feed-forward network, which is a non-recurrent network, which contains inputs, outputs, and hidden layers, the signals can only travel in one direction. So signals can only go in one direction from this layer to this layer and from this layer to this layer and so on and so forth. Input data is passed onto a layer of processing elements where it performs calculations. 
each processing element makes its computation based upon a weighted sum of its inputs so the processing element here is the node yes is each of these nodes or you can think of it as a simple and small perceptron the new calculated values then become the new input values that feed the next layer we repeated this several times this process continues until it has gone through all the layers and determines the output we've said that before so from one layer to another until we reach the output a threshold transfer function is sometimes used to quantify the output of a neuron in the output layer sometimes people use the transfer function the threshold transfer function feed forward networks include the perceptron the one we studied before the li linear and the nonlinear the nonlinear is the MLP so the MLP can be considered as a feed forward uh, uh, neural network and the radial basis function network will try to study this if time allows feed forward networks are often used in data mining so in sort of classification as we learned about the neuron and the perceptron and the multi-layer perceptron so just just to have a look at the feed forward network we have we have sort of neurons and nodes and data goes into one direction the normal weighted sum and the transfer function that we studied before without any complication the other type is the feedback uh, neural network feedback a uh, feedback ANN a feedback network has feedback parts so the name actually suggests that feed forward and feedback it has feedback paths meaning that they can have signals traveling in both directions using loops so we can have signal going backwards from output towards the input uh, layers from out towards the hidden and input layers all possible connections between neurons are, are allowed so we can have any some kind of connection between the neurons since loops are present in this type of network it becomes a non-linear dynamic system which changes continuously until it reaches a state of equilibrium so it can be complicated but because we have uh, loops and back connections and all kinds of possible connections it becomes a dynamic system which is really powerful it just can be a bit complicated to uh, understand and debug feedback networks are often used in associative memories in optimization problem so in AI artificial intelligence where the network looks for the best arrangement of interconnected factors uh, speaking about AI I will have a couple of videos uh, just an introduction to uh, genetic alg genetic algorithms uh, you can find those in uh, my on my YouTube channel so these are the feed forward the feedback with uh, uh, sorry the feedback network so we can have our inputs and then the uh, the our neurons and then we can have data going in the opposite direction so it can go from left to right or from right to left as we mentioned they can be uh, some sort of um, complicated in a, in a way but they are quite powerful and used mainly in AI and in associative memories now I'm going to stop here I just wanted to explain what they are what they mean not too much theory as we uh, promised before hopefully in the next video I'll be explaining the radial basis function networks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.